What extraordinary images from some of our best photojournalists taken during very difficult circumstances. Well, hello and welcome. I'm Louisa Graham, Chief Executive of the Walkley Foundation, coming to you live from Sydney through a virtual lens. I'm your host for this evening as we announce the winners in the 2020 Mid-Year Celebration of Journalism. But before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation as the traditional custodians of the land on which we broadcast from tonight. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And welcome all of those of us who are joining us from home online as we respond to COVID-19. I hope you are all safe and well. So to begin with, just some housekeeping. All viewers are muted and the chat function has been disabled. There will be some speeches from our valued partners and all of our winners will be profiled on our website, walkleys.com, following the announcement. Our mid-year program was established to recognise the work of young journalists and specialist areas not included in the Walkley Awards. And to avoid confusion, we have taken this opportunity to honour one of our significant benefactors, June Andrews, and apply her name to these specialist awards. Now, June was the sister-in-law of our founder, Sir William Gaston Walkley, and now her legacy and contribution to the foundation will be remembered through excellence in the craft. In the program, we also administer awards on behalf of other organisations, including Our Watch, Media Diversity Australia, and the Pascal Prize. The recent bushfires that plagued most of Australia and the COVID crisis has demonstrated the essential role journalism has in keeping the public informed and countering disinformation. Journalism is an essential service and the reporting we recognise tonight is courageous, professional and does our industry proud. I'm sharing with you the presentation order which we will follow as we announce our winners tonight. But before we get underway, I would like to hand you over to Lenore Taylor, Editor of The Guardian Australia and Chair of the Walkling Judging Board who oversee the awards. Welcome, Lenore. Thank you, Louisa. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this very, very different awards ceremony. I guess we've all learnt to do things quite differently over the past few months. We've learnt to run newsrooms from kitchen tables and home offices. Uh, we've learnt to carry out our jobs in very, very different ways. We've all become more expert than we ever wanted to be at Zoom, how to mute, how to angle the screen to show only the neat bits of your house. And all this learning is just as well because it means that tonight we can still gather together to recognise the work of young journalists and women's leadership in the media, from the excellent reporters across a range of specialist areas at this media celebration. It might not be quite as fun as gathering together at a nice venue with a drinks tray going around, but we do still get to do the most important thing, which is to recognise excellence in what we do. And given all the pressures on our profession at the moment, and it's more than important than ever that we stand up for journalism. We can see so clearly in countries around us how quickly the functioning of the fourth estate can be undermined by the President of the United States disseminating outright falsehoods and calling facts he doesn't like fake news to the conviction of Mary Res Maria Ressa in the Philippines. And as Maria said outside court this week, freedom of the press is the foundation of every single right you have as a citizen. And if we can't hold power to account, we can't do anything. There are pressures here on journalism as well, obviously, commercial, legislative, but it's also been very obvious, really clear how important journalism is in times of crisis through the horrific summer of bushfires that we just saw in those photographs and the total upheaval to our lives of COVID-19. And it's been amazing how journalists across all Australian mastheads and news stations have continued to produce really important stories while dealing with everything that 2020 has thrown at us so far. I'm really pleased to see such a range of work from all over the country from freelancers and small production companies and regional publishers and major metro publishers, even an audible original podcast in the finalist lineup. We're all figuring out new ways to do what we do and new formats to bring our work to readers and to viewers, but the essence of it is the same, to tell stories, to ferret out the facts and to find the truth. I'm also very pleased that while there are some familiar names on the finalists list, there are also a whole new crop of fantastic talented younger journalists who are being recognised here tonight. 
I'd like to thank the Jib Foundation for their continued support, and that allows our overall Young Journalist of the Year winner to travel to the United States for two weeks of professional development at news organisations, including the New York Times and the Columbia Journalism Review. We're not sure exactly when they'll be able to take that up, but the prize is there. And it also allows each of our Young Journalist Award winners to receive mentoring from a senior journalist for the next 12 months. I'd also like to thank my fellow members of the Walk the judging board and all the judges in all the categories. We're all busy, it takes a lot of time, but we do it happily and we do it proudly because we know it's important to recognise and celebrate the best of what we do. I'd also like to thank Louisa and the team at the Walkley Foundation for their dedication and professionalism. They're also figuring out how to carry on in these weird times, how to continue to do the Walkley's great work and how to organise events like these. I also need to remind everyone that it is already that time of year again. Entries for the Walkley Awards open on July 1, so it's time to sift through all those exclusives and decide what to submit. Just to, to finish, I'd like to wish good luck to all the finalists, and I hope everybody has a good night. Thanks. Thank you, Lenore, and we are making our way through this uh, virtual recording tonight, so I hope everyone at home does have their champagne glass charged and ready to go. I also want to acknowledge and thank the judges for the enormous amount of um, effort and time that they put into judging the awards. I would now like to acknowledge our trustees, Mia, and thank them for the tremendous work that they do in protecting the rights of journalists, and in particular, the excellent leadership they have shown on press freedom and rights for freelancers. Tonight, as Lenore has mentioned, would not be possible without the many partners who have thrown their support behind these awards. We have media organisations, corporations, tertiary institutions, government, tech companies, philanthropic supporters and unions. And they all put up their hands to say that good journalism is important and must continue to thrive. We'll hear from a few of them tonight as they pledge their commitment to journalism and the Walkley Foundation. So please now welcome Andrew Hunter from Facebook to say a few words. Hi Andrew, I hope you're well tonight. Thank you Louisa. Facebook is really proud to be sponsoring the best Australian journalism. In 2020 it's being read, watched and listened to more than ever before. And this time last year when we met in person, um, it, it was a different, a different set of circumstances, but journalism has only grown in importance since then. In the era of the bushfires and COVID-19, it can be not only life-changing, but life-saving. This year, we've been proud to build on our partnership with the Walkley Foundation, working together on our Reader Revenue Accelerator, which focused on driving subscriptions and memberships for newsrooms, as well as our COVID-19 relief fund. And we continue to uh, working and building on our investment in news in Australia. I'd like to congratulate uh, all the nominees. Um, thank you for doing such great work, such great and important work. Uh, I'd also like to thank Louisa Lauren and the rest of the Walkley organisation, including the judges, uh, for their ongoing efforts. We're really proud to be joining you tonight in supporting Australian journalism. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Well, now let's get ready. Have you got your virtual cheering going? Here we go. Our first award of the night is the Student Journalist Award of the Year and it's supported by Maclay College. The finalists will now appear on the screen and they are Nabir Khan, University of Queensland and ABC. Andre Nasiri, University of New South Wales and newsworthy.org.au. Andre Tis Evanson from Monash University, Mojo News and ABC News. And the winner is Andre Nasiri. Andre's submission deals with complex issues including politics, personalities and power. An, excellate, an excellent and fascinating reads and congratulations Andre. Our next award is the June Andrews Award for Best Industrial Reporting. And this award commemorates the work of Helen O'Flynn and Alan Knight, two of the pioneers of the industrial round. And a special thanks goes to Cathy O'Hare for all her support in backing this award. Now let's see the finalists. Adele Ferguson, The Age and the Sydney Morning Herald. Ben Schneiders and Nick McKenzie, The Age. Ben Schneiders and Royce Miller, The Age. And the winner is 
Ben Schneider and Nick McKenzie. The judges noted these stories caused a national political firestorm lasting weeks and the work was only possible because of years of experience from both Schneiders and Mackenzie. So congratulations to both of you. Up next, we have the June Andrews Award for Freelance Journalist of the Year. Recognising the unique and growing contribution freelancers make as they forge their own paths in a tough industry. And they are some of our bravest and most creative journalists and the award is supported by Media Super. The finalists will now appear on the screen, and they are Joanna Bell, Nina Fennell, and Karishma Vyas. And who's the winner? It is Karishma Vyas. And this was described as brilliant storytelling in two countries, Afghanistan and America. And Karishma managed to access some of the most sensitive areas of Afghan society, bringing to the screen extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. So congratulations, Karishma. Next up is the June Andrews Award for Women's Leadership in Media, honouring and celebrating women who are making journalistic contribution to gender equality. The award is supported by PwC, and I would like to invite Dorothy Hisgrove to say a few words before we announce the winner. Hello, Dorothy. Hi, Louisa, and um, good evening, everybody, and thank you. It's wonderful to be joining you virtually this evening. And PwC is delighted to sponsor the Women's Leadership in Media Award for the fifth consecutive year, and we thank the Walkley Foundation for this opportunity. The Women's Leadership in Media Award reflects the important role of media in improving community perceptions of gender equality issues and in shining a light on how much better we need to do. With media accessible any time and anywhere today, journalists, reporters and producers play as big a role as ever influencing perceptions and ideas about the role of women in society. Telling stories and starting conversations about the opportunities and the challenges women face is crucial in breaking down the conscious and the unconscious stereotypes and behaviours that disempower women. These stories also help us to be better equipped to solve society's most significant problems because we are able to view them through a much more holistic lens. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy and PwC for your ongoing support. It has been really important. Now to the finalists for the Women's Leadership. They are Belinda Hawkins and Angela Leonardi, Australian Story, ABC. Joanne Lester, Madeleine Hepperton and Rebecca Barry, Media Stockade, NITV and SBS On Demand. And finally, Inga Ting and the ABC team. And the winner is, I always feel like I need a drum roll here, jo Joanna Lester, Madeleine Hepperton and Rebecca Barry. The judges felt that this was a refreshing account of the power of women to challenge and change attitudes in politics and sport. So congratulations, team. I feel like we are setting a cracking pace, although I am missing the applause, but, but please don't let that stop you from having a good old whoop, whoop at home. So now to our Our Watch Award, and I would like to invite CEO Patty Kinsley to say a few words. Hello, Patty. Hello, thanks, thanks very much and good evening to everyone. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet this evening and where I am, the Jaja Warong people, and I pay my respects to elders of past and present. I'd also acknowledge that violence against Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women is disproportionate and unacceptable in this country and our watch will continue to work to address this situation and to, re to reject all forms of racism. It's truly an honour to be here this evening speaking to so many of the nation's best journalists. Over the past months, during our nation's lockdown, it's been devastating to learn of a spike in the rates of violence against women. This has only firmed our resolve to continue our work as a national leadership in partnership with you and others to stop this violence from occurring. I'd also like to acknowledge that this has been an extremely troubling time for journalism. I know you're facing challenges on many fronts, and while some of these you've always faced, like time pressures and stretched resources, these are exacerbated by the pandemic and a possible recession. So as media outlets close and newsrooms shrink, yet again, you're forced to do more with less. And all this at a time when the demand for accurate, ethical and insightful reporting, reporting that helps people make sense of what's going on around them, is at an all time high. So the fact that 45 of you submitted entries to the Our Watch Award at this time 
is testament to how passionately you care about contributing to the prevention of violence against women. We all know the reality of violence against women is devastating, but the evidence tells us and our shared humanity holds on to the hope that this violence is preventable. The uncomfortable truth is that gender inequality sets the underlying context of violence against women with drivers such as rigid gender stereotypes and male control of decision making in public and private life and male friendships and forms of masculinity that emphasise disrespect towards women. Another key driver is the condoning or excusing of this violence. Given your integral role in shaping and challenging community attitudes, your good reporting, reporting that does not allow for the trivialising of violence against women, is so important. When your reporting builds trust with the family violence sector, respectfully uses the voices of survivors, and avoids unintentionally victim blaming or excusing the perpetrator, you set a standard for others to follow. And when your reporting correctly identifies and reports on the underlying drivers of violence against women, it can not only improve the public's understanding of this issue, but make a significant contribution to building a safer community. You are a crucial part of the jigsaw that is our continuing efforts to prevent violence against women with other pieces in education, workplaces, sporting organisations and in government. But given you reach deep into the attitudes of every Australian, the media and good journalism is a corner piece of this jigsaw. So that is why tonight we recognise and reward great reporting on violence against women because we know it is both important and hard to do. So thank you for all that you do, day in, day out, to shine a spotlight on this issue and to promote gender equality in this country and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. And we hope to see the great work that Our Watch has been doing continue, uh, particularly the fellowships. They've been tremendous for, for journalists, so thank you. And now to announce the finalists for the Our Watch Award. They are Nina Fennell, news.com.au, The Mercury and NT News. Annabelle Hennessy, The West Australian. And Kathy Marks, the Weekend Australian Magazine. And who is the winner? Well, it is Nina Fennell. The judges said this work was an exceptional, impressive, impactful multimedia campaign that was evidently the culmination of a comprehensive investigation. Congratulations, Nina. Next, the Media Diversity Australia Award, managed by the Walkley Foundation and an initiative of Media Diversity Australia. This award is supported by CoHealth and the National Ethnic and Multicultural Broadcasters Council. And let's see who the finalists are. Joanne Bell and the Bird's Eye View team, Story Projects. Mahmoud Fazel and Rebecca Metcalf, Audible Originals. Corinne Grant and Michael Hing, SBS. And the winner is Mahmoud Fazel and Rebecca Metcalf. The judges felt no gangsters in paradise provide an honest and raw look into an often marginalised Australian community. Congratulations to our winner. Now, arts journalism is a genre that has been on the decline, but thanks to the support of the copyright agency and philanthropists like Judith Nielsen, it has been invigorated. Tonight, we are announcing two winners of two arts prizes, the June Andrews Award for Arts Journalism and the Pascal Prize for Arts Criticism. And through the support of the copyright agency Cultural Fund, both winners will receive $5,000 in prize money. And that's nice work if you can get it. So the first, arts journalism. And this award is supported by Facebook. And the finalists are Hagar Cohen and the background briefing team, ABC. Steve Dow, Mianjin, The Saturday Paper and Guardian Australia. And Rosemary Neal, The Australian. I think, is that right? Yep, we've got the right ones, good, okay. <laughs> and the winner is Steve Dow. The judges said Steve's work was an outstanding portfolio of arts journalism, showcasing an impressive range and incisive investigating ability. So congratulations, Steve. And now onto the Pascal Prize for Arts Criticism, which celebrates the unique contribution of critics to our cultural landscapes. And the finalists are Jack Khalil, The Lifted Brow, I think we got a bit of a preview on that. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> Melinda Harvey, Sydney Review of Books. And Mireille Jouchaw, NewYorker.com and The Monthly. 
and the winner is Marie Juchel. Now the judges said, in a strong and diverse field of entries, Marie stood out for her insightful contextualization of the work, elegant storytelling and depth of research. So congratulations, Marie, well done. Now, we get on to celebrating those aged 28 years and younger as we announce the Young Journalist of the Year Awards. And these awards have really identified the rising stars of the next generation. Journalists like last year's winner, Oliver Gordon, and others such as Laura Murphy Oates, Sophie McNeil, Paul Farrell and Yara Bo Mellon, who have all carved out stellar careers. And we'd like to think that these awards have helped you along the way. So the first category up is short form journalism and it's supported by the ABC. Now let's see the finalists. We've got Natasha Chrysanthos from the Sydney Morning Herald, Michael Fowler of The Age, and Luke Henriks Gomez from Guardian Australia. And the winner is Luke Henriks Gomez. With deft analysis and gripping reporting, Luke demonstrated the sophistication of a much more seasoned journalism veteran. Congratulations, Luke. Long form journalism is our next category and it's supported by The Age and the Sydney Morning Herald. And the finalists in this category are Ella, Archibald Binge, The Feed, SBS Viceland, Avani Diaz, Hack, Triple J, ABC, and Amber Schultz, Crikey Inc. The winner is Ella Archibald Binge. The story shone a light on a chapter of the nation's history which many Australians may not know much about, revealing the scale of unpaid wages to Indigenous workers and the impact on successive generations. So congratulations, Ella. Now, some of Australia's best reporters have begun their careers in regional or community news outlets. So it's great to see such a strong field in this next category. And the award is supported by Google News Initiative. Let's see the finalists. Matt Bamford, ABC. Chatel Francis, The Weekly Times. And Sharon Grosh, The Canberra Times. And the winner is Sharon Grosh. Now this meticulous investigation determined reporting and courageous storytelling. So well done, Sharon. Next up is the innovative, inspiring world of digital visual storytelling, sorry. And the award is supported by Sky News. The finalists are Dion Georgopoulos from the Canberra Times, Tom Joyner, ABC, Marty Smiley, Jack Telenares, and Pat Forrest, SBS. And the winner is Marty Smiley, Jack Telenares, and Pat Forrest. And the judges found this entry original, creative, and compelling, making politics interesting and accessible to a younger audience. And that's no mean feat. So congratulations, team. Are you still with us? There's only a few more to go. And our finalists and our winners really do appreciate the acknowledgement of their work. So let's just give a quick break where we say <coughs> cheers to them. Now, whoops, make sure I get it back on the table. Now up to public service journalism. And the award is supported by News Corp Australia. And the finalists are Annabelle Hennessy, The West Australian, Luke Henriks Gomez, Guardian Australia, and Marty Smiley, SBS. And the winner is Annabelle Hennessy. And the judges said Annabelle's reporting was a powerful example of how journalism can make a difference. So congratulations, Annabelle. And now for the biggie, the hotly anticipated Young Australian Journalist of the Year. And as Lenore has outlined, thanks to the support for the Jib Foundation, the winner will receive two weeks visiting US newsrooms, including the New York Times, Columbia Journalism Review, Quartz and Buzzfeed, and with return flights included if we can get there. So fingers crossed. But all category winners will also get the opportunity to learn from industry leaders through the Walkley's Mentor Program. But before we get there, I would like to invite John B. Fairfax from the Jib Foundation to say a few words. He is a man who is familiar with journalism. He has made a lifelong commitment to the industry and recognises that we do need to, to back this next generation. So thank you, John, and welcome.
Oh, thank you, Louisa. It's a pleasure to be here in these rather unusual circumstances. Uh, it's a BYO session, so we haven't sort of gone short on that one, which is gratifying. But I'd like also to commend uh, the Walkley Foundation for what they do in terms of uh, supporting and um, uh, encouraging journalism generally, but particularly young journalists. And this year has been no different to virtually every other year because the media industry, uh, our world, has been in upheaval. Um, and uh, I'll refer to that in a moment. But Oliver Gordon, the winner of last year's award, we were fortunate to meet up with him the other day. And here is a man that uh, is uh, working in Alice Springs in a regional environment for the ABC. And some of you may have heard his report on the ABC this morning. Uh, but uh, the, uh, there have been many closures of uh, regional newspapers this year. Uh, some suspended because of the virus, um, and AAP, of course, has been in upheaval, uh, deserted by the two major media organisations in this country. Uh, but let's not... And so there are a lot of people without jobs, and that's terribly sad. Good journalists, dedicated journalists, who now no longer have jobs. Uh, but it's not just the individual, is it, that we're concerned about? We are concerned about them, but we're also concerned about the communities that they serve, uh, because this is an important thing for regional uh, areas, and without the, uh, their local newspapers, uh, we, we lose some substance. They lose the information that they require, and uh, also, the, we, as a part of our democratic society, we support uh, the election of local councils. And those councils, they need to be held accountable. And without the newspapers, there's just one other little bit that disappears. And I know Alan Sunderland has been uh, re re uh, talking about this and writing about this in, over the last couple of days. But I also, I'd like just to quote the Pulitzer Prize winning author, uh, Richard Kluger, who said, every time a newspaper dies, even a bad one, the country moves a little closer to authoritarianism. So we need to be concerned. There are so many, as have been indicated tonight, there are so many big stories and important stories around. I've never seen so many. Thanks, Donald Trump. You're doing a good job there. Um, but, but it is important that uh, they are reported on. And uh, the other factor that I, I suppose we've all seen this week is the ever-present malfeasance uh, uh, in, in, in our own public institutions, as was demonstrated in Victoria. So these stories need telling. Uh, it's very important. But let's not forget that journalism is a rewarding um, career. It really is rewarding to be a journo. I know, because I've done that. I was there a few years ago now. And uh, I can tell you that it's very satisfying and... Uh, uh, so I encourage people to enter these awards, and it's terrific to see so many young people and entries uh, this year. The past winners uh, of, of the the Journalism Award, um, uh, we've been very satisfied with them. They've been stimulating people, uh, and uh, uh, I, I would uh, just simply like whoever wins this award to congratulate them because you're... You, you're, you're going to have a, a lot of fun. You'll, you'll meet a lot of very valuable journalists both here in Australia and uh, when you go on the when, when you go uh, on the overseas component of the award. Um, so well done. Congratulations. You're in a fantastic career. Thank you very much, John, and your support has been extraordinary. So thank you. So without much further ado, the winner of the 2020 Young Australian Journalist of the Year is <gasps> Annabelle Hennessy. <laughs> so congratulations, Annabelle. The judges felt Annabelle Hennessy's work deserves this honour because it demonstrated true excellence at every turn. She discovered the thread of a story, teased it out, chased it relentlessly and brought it to a public tension. Her storytelling was factual and compassionate, moving deftly between the human, legal and political elements of this story. And the impact of her journalism has been immense 
a woman freed from prison and laws rewritten. Just exactly what good journalism should do. So thank you, Annabelle. And congratulations to all our winners tonight. You can read all the details and profiles of all the journalists. We will have them on our winning journalists. We will have them on the Walkleys website, walkleys.com for you, um, I think, uh, later on this evening. And, and certainly tomorrow you can read more. We hope to see you again on the 20th of November, live from the Walkley Awards, which we are hosting in Tamworth this year, thanks to the New South Wales Government. Once again, a sincere thank you to all of you for joining us, to all of our partners, and of course, a huge congratulations for all our finalists and winners. So before you leave, please take a moment to acknowledge all those journalists who have committed hours of judging to these awards. Their names are appearing on the screen right now, and uh, they, have spent, they have really made a commitment, and, and, and that's what the Walkley Foundation is founded on as well as the fantastic Walkley team. So good night and thank you for joining us.